One of them wanted to be the security guy. He claimed he was a security guy. Welcome to Security Guy Radio, sir. What's your name? Thank you. This is George Siegel. I'm Director of Product Management at IDV Solutions. What does IDV Solutions do? Yeah, IDV Solutions makes command center software, and we help organizations uh, with a problem that many, many face, which is they have a lot of data, um, but they don't know where their people are really, they don't know where their assets are, and they don't understand all the risks to those people and assets. And fundamentally, that's the problem we help solve for them is where are my people and how can I protect them? Interesting. Now, there's a lot of little apps for components of this, each aspect. There's a travel app. I know that my guy's on a plane and he's going somewhere. There's a security app for in, in country, right? Let's evaluate that country. But I'm looking at this screen, you've got everything on here. I mean, yeah, you're yeah, feeding absolutely. all data to one spot and it's visual. How many feeds you got going on in here? Yeah, great question. Um, actually, all those, all those individual apps are kind of part of the problem, right? Um, you can go into some command centers and you might see uh, a wall of uh, you know two by ten monitors, so twenty different screens, and they all have different information. For each on feed, it. that's For right. For each feed, you yeah. could have weather and the weather channel on one. You might have CNN, BBC. You might have incident management. You might have social media, and people really just can't process it's not all that. No, it's, and, and it's I always, impossible. You know, I used to yeah. work at the, at the studios, and you know, we had like two hundred fifty cameras in one building and they expected our guards to watch those. You can't. Yeah, not you possible. Can't. Not possible. It yeah. looks good. It's a good visual. It does. <laughs> it, it, it does look good. It looks impressive, but when it comes right down to it, uh, it's, a, it's a problem that uh, it's, it's not unlike being in a cockpit uh, of, a, of a jet aircraft um, and why they came up with heads-up displays. Yep. You, need, you need everything in one place yeah. in your vision and you can't be trying to associate um, all this information. So like most brilliant ideas, it's simple. Not simple to make, I'm not saying that. Not yeah. simple technically. But the concept is brilliant and simple. It's one place. So walk me through this and show me what we're what we're looking at here. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, so again, product is Visual Command Center. Uh, you'll typically find this uh, the software running in a, in a, a global security operations center or some other type of command center that has um, a mission of protecting people, maybe protecting assets. Right, large uh, we have, corporations. Yeah, large corporations. It could be protecting a supply chain, ensuring that uh, business continues and that we don't have disruptions that can um, you know, cause a, 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 a manufacturing plant to have to shut down Trucking or company, something like that. Right? Absolutely. You know who the biggest trucker in America is? Uh, Walmart. I, Walmart, yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, Second is Schneider, who yeah. works for Walmart. Sure, yeah, yeah absolutely. 1,500 and, trucks in their center up in Chicago yeah, a day. It's amazing, crazy. amazing so this operation. Would, this, this could help that kind this, of operation. This could potentially help yeah. that kind of operation, yeah. And so, you know, to go back to the point about uh, the manufacturing, you know, to shut down a line, uh, because they have things like adhesives and paint and work in, in, in process, that can be one to two million dollars to shut down a line. And so you really want to understand what's going around, going on, not just in your building, but around you. And those are things like weather, uh, those are things like terrorism, hazardous materials. And you asked about how many different feeds. Um, the answer is I don't actually know because it changes all the time. And, and you can, um, it's very flexible Scalable. because you can add that. Yeah. You can add in different feeds. If you have a source of information, that's something that we can bring in and help you visualize. And then uh, to, to put a point on it, um, what we do is we help cut through all that all that noise, the you noise. want to know about the stuff that's happening near your plant. You don't want to know about something maybe a hundred miles away that is that is um, not going to affect your assets at all. And so that's what our that's what Visual Command Center yeah. does. It helps you show relevance. Unless to it's your a world event. In a world event. Now let me ask you that. All right. Yeah. So let's say uh, let's take Florida, and because we're looking at Florida here on the map, it's nice and close to look at. And locally, I need to know things about weather. Obviously, maybe sure. something that's going on in Cuba. That's a problem. Uh, crime patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, what else could we put in there? Um, civil unrest. Maybe people. You know. Oh, social media. Somebody social starts media. tweeting sure. that we're going to have a big car rally and block all the traffic. Right. That's useful locally. My theory on security is this: all security is personal, all security is local, and all security is now. In other words, you can't yeah. say, "Oh, there might be a security threat." Well, deal with it now. We don't. And if it's Absolutely. a future threat, deal with it now. Right. So I could see 
this working very good on a local level, but let's say there's a world event. Can I feed the world event into this view? In other words, I'm, I'm focusing on Florida, but I really yeah. want to know if there's some, something goes haywire in Iraq tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I'm too busy at the convention here today, and I'm not paying attention to the sure. news. Can I feed that kind of thing into my profile? And what's it going to do? Is it going to change my map to say, look, go over here, now look at this, or what? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think we'd, we would say that uh, no two organizations are different. Their missions are different. The profiles of where their people are, where their assets are, are different. And, and, and therefore, they need a very flexible and scalable solution to go back to that point. Right. Uh, and so uh, what we do is we try and connect to the best of and data sources. And so you mentioned social media. That's a great example. So we work with our partners who have expertise in social media or expertise in activism to bring that information on. So we're not the gatherers of that information. They are. They're right. number one at it. You're and pulling the feeds in. We're pulling the feeds right. in from them. We're visualizing it. And again, when it's when we see one of those, let's say it's a you know a social media event and, or an activism event near an asset, that's when we'll generate the alert for you to and put it right in your face. We'll put it on the map so that you can assess it and take some action on it. So give me an idea of pricing, uh, and here's what I'm thinking. And you don't have to give me a quote, because yeah. we're not holding security guy ready to the quotes, okay? But uh, there's a company called Geofedia. They monitor social media, and they can do yeah. a map like this and show you what's going on. I, gotta, I have to subscribe to Geofedia. Yeah. You have a subscription to somebody like that, and now that becomes part of my subscription. Is that kind of the idea? So, so I don't have to subscribe yeah. to 25 yeah. different things. You're going to help me make those yeah. data connections. Absolutely, in, okay. in, some, in some cases, uh, we have done that for you. And so, for example, we're, we're looking right now at the National Hurricane Center forecast for Joaquin that's gonna be um, looking like it's gonna come up, come up the eastern seaboard here in the next few days. That's real, that's a real... Real time, yep, that's, that's a real forecast that's and that's looking. real time. <laughs> and this is, this is the forecast and it's showing us the path Right. and uh, showing us what it's going to look like 93 hours out, 117 hours out. Wow. And then this red area is the, um, the area in that actually the center could be located. So right. they give us the forecast path, but the, they also say that, well, maybe the forecast center is going to be out here. Well, we have organizations that are very, very averse to hurricanes, and so there are specialist providers like, I'll give you an example, hurricanemapping.com. And uh, we have a, um, a relationship with them and we've actually built the extension or connection to them. And we can bring that in instead of this one because some people want to know where all the wind fields, yeah. uh, you know, and very detailed information right. because that could be relevant for their organization. And in that case, um, you can come to us and, and we can um, just kind of pass it through. With a case like Geofedia, yeah, you can get a, a subscription from Geofedia and they're one of our partners they are really experts at um, social media visualization, and so we have a feed built right in, and it's very, uh, very easy to turn on. So oh, good! All right. It's a it's a perfect example of the kind of thing we like to do. Work with the people who are best at so their industry. So one thing we were uh, talking about the show today with a lot of providers is integration. And integration doesn't really apply to this. I'm trying to think of security concerns I would have. In other words, if somebody got into my network and found I had this subscription. You know what? It's not internal data. No, it's what I do. It's how I protect my assets, but it's not classified data. It's not. Well, I guess you could put employee data in there, couldn't you? Yeah, people do. People okay. do put employee data there. So let's talk about that because you know, if I'm in a hospital, I got HIPAA, right? Sure. And if I'm a studio, I have movie stars, right? So how do how do does your software help protect that? Yeah. feed, right? Yeah, there are multiple ways to do that. Um, some organizations, if, if you want to, for example, connect to an employee database, yeah, absolutely. Like you SAP? Could have, yeah, you could, connect, you could connect Visual Command Center and get an extract, if you will, or an export, okay. bring it in, um, but you might, have you might have information that certain people in the command center might need to know, like if there's an employee with a, a health issue right. that um, in the case of a hurricane, we'll just take that, Maybe they're going to take some more time to uh, to evacuate because they have a disability, or maybe they need uh, to have uh, you know life uh, preserving medication on uh, at the, on their person at all times. Right. Those are things you probably want to know about if that's your mission of protecting your. Now, people. with the software, can, take take yeah. my SAP data, my HR data, and take it as it is, and you convert it into a display. Yeah. Or can I add to your software and say, you know what, I want to update. Uh, I want to update my software and create an employee profile. 
Yeah. Whereas original data has to be updated for you to yeah. pull, pull it in. So we, take, we can take that original data, uh, and going back to my point about that private data, you could shield that data from the people who don't need to see it. You oh, may give, internally? Yeah, internally. Yours? Oh, okay, so you that's could, good. You could give privileges to some mm. people to see that to see that data, and for other people, their role may may mean they don't they don't have any need to know. I'm thinking and of the so data center and the, and the dispatcher, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's a, a lower level position, yeah. basic monitoring, and maybe they really shouldn't be seeing that uh, security guy radio was on uh, narcolepsy medicine yeah. or something, right? So sure. if you can filter that out, that'd be great. But it could say. You know, red flag could come up to this as he has a medical condition. Yeah. Call HR. Something yeah. Like that. Oh, that's yeah, exactly. great. Exactly. Yeah, there there are ways to do that, and uh, that that's not uncommon for us to need to work with an organization to show again just the appropriate level of information that they need. So years ago, there uh, there was a company called uh, Groove, and they made a point-to-point -point, um, uh, connection, so I could connect to uh, you know the studio in London, and it was all encrypted, and I could share files and all this kind of stuff. Is this shareable? So if I have a subscription for my uh, corporation in Burbank and we have a, a business in uh, France, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not using the same view because France is different than Burbank, yeah. right? Uh, but am I going to need two subscriptions, you know, two databases, two data fields, two tables, or is it kind of still globally in yeah. one place? Yeah, still globally, and I'll zoom out so that you can see the world. It's not uncommon for organizations that we work with to be to really have global operations. Sure, a lot of places. Yeah. A lot of them tend to be located in the United States, but as we can see from the representation on the map here, we're showing people all over the world, we're showing buildings all over the world, we're showing risk events happening all oh, over yeah, the world. Oh yeah, we have a little, so, a little person yeah, this, icon. Yep. And some of those are travelers, some yeah. of those might be employees from the, the field team. So it really is a global solution. And, uh, and so to your question, do I need a different one for France? The way we typically work is um, you get a package uh, that's part of the subscription right. and that encompasses enough people to have this running in multiple operation centers. And uh, again, that's fairly typical for uh, an organization to have multiple operation centers so that they could um, share the load or fail over if there's a, a reason, um, you know, if, if the power is out in their main command center they can go off-site and have access to everything you see here yeah. securely. So Pierre in France could zoom out like you just did, and he could go over here and snoop around in Burbank and see what's going on if he wanted to. If or, he wanted to. Or, but can we <laughs> but also lock him out? that could also be out? shielded, yes. Excellent, okay, yeah. so those are, yeah. those, that's great. Yeah. What's the stuff down here? Yeah, this is a timeline. Um, it's important um, not, that, uh, not just that you know where people are or where events are, but that you also understand when they are. Uh, a good example is, uh, you know, the hurricane is forecast to come up the east coast um, and we can bring in travel information and again we're looking for the intersection of is that hurricane going to be affecting where the person in, is. Well it's also important to know when that person is there. You wouldn't want to generate an alert if they're long gone. Oh right, right. So that's the kind of thing we can do with the timeline. We want to understand where and when things are occurring and, th and that's really the basis of the alerting. Yeah. So I can see Microsoft using this, CNN using this, you know, big studios, big operations. What would a smallest client be? Is it, is it cost effective for a smaller client? That is, you know, they got some assets, sure. but you could be a client that's physically small, but your jewelry business that has half a billion dollars in yeah. gold somewhere, right? Sure. Uh, I mean, how scalable down? I mean, who would be the smallest type of user of this kind of thing? Yeah, I'd like I, to get this, I, frankly. That's, that's I mean, a great question. Great. I think it really depends on, you know, the value um, and the size of the organization um, really helps get a lot of value because it is global and, and yeah. you have global operations. Um, if it's something that's really, really important for you to protect and it's high value, um, you know, that would be something that the organization would look at is and it decide. A, is it a monthly subscription? Is it a uh, per user or how, how is it? Annual subscription. Annual it's one time subscription, annual subscription. Yes. okay. Mm -hmm. and, and it's modular, as I said, so all of these different feeds that we were looking at before, there are there are ones like the hurricanemapping.com yeah. that you can add on. There's connections What's to, it come with? It's like yeah. buying a car. Yeah. What, what do you got in there for How long do you price? have? It'd take a little while to go through that. <laughs> I mean, that, you, got, yeah. you got like 50, not what, but you got like 50 yeah. to default to feeds or something like that? It, or? It hard, it'd be hard for me to put a number on it because oh, okay. it depends on how I slice and dice it. So in terms of weather, we have more than um, 36 different forecasts and current conditions oh, it's in not, weather it's alone. it's not just the weather channel. Yeah. It's not just the weather. Oh, yeah. okay, and all right. So yeah, that's a we lot. Can, we can visualize things like 
uh, the radar, precipitation, um, from the National Weather Service alerting, there's about 50 different categories of alerting. So it's, it's, it's how you count it, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's, it's hard to quantify the number and it's really open-ended because you can add things um, on top of that. This is a weird yeah. question. So any yeah. military applications? Uh, there Users? can be. All right. Yeah, there can be. Well, you be. wouldn't tell me if you get to come um, here, I get yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, are you restricted from selling it outside the U.S.? Because this is um, high intelligence, right? Yeah, we have sold this outside the United States. No laws so we're not, kind of we're not right. um, Yeah, it's not subject to export restrictions. And, All right. Uh, you know, we're very proud of our record. We work with a lot of big organizations. You mentioned a couple of their names before. Uh, we protect, uh, you know, we protect their operations. We protect some important people, some important places in the world, and we're very proud of that record. George, this has been fascinating. Uh, I told you off air, I kind of pitched this once to a studio, and they said, this can't be done. And I said, no, you don't know how to do it. But uh, technology is caught up with, uh, with the visions on things. And I, this is my favorite, favorite, as is product. Well, thank you so much. I've done much. 20 that, of them. I had one that was my favorite. I really favorite appreciate that. Half and hour I, ago, and this is a favorite one. That is great to hear. Well, and good our, luck to our, you. our developers work very hard, and we appreciate all their, their late nights yeah. and the coffee and the Mountain Dew. And uh, so that's great to hear. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank all you. Right, bye.